Hey everybody, Hawkeye Pierce here, and this is uh, part one on summary of uh, curve sketching. So we're going to do um, uh, first derivative, second derivative for uh, increasing and decreasing uh, relative min or max, uh, and then um, points of inflection come out of second derivative. So um, we're going to be doing these with uh, with polynomials. I'll do that uh, in this lesson. Rationals. Um, uh, also in this lesson, I'm actually these are both going together right here as one example. Radical, um, I don't have one of those. I'll try and do one of those in the third lesson. I'm doing trig on the next lesson, you guys. Um, if, if I do one, great. If I don't, just remember the, the domain restrictions for radical, you guys, is uh, the, the inside piece, the radicand, has to be greater than or equal to zero. That would be the only exception on that, but everything else is the same. Okay, all right, so uh, let's find the intercepts, real extrema, uh, the points of inflections, the asymptotes, and then we'll sketch the graph of this rational expression, x squared minus 2x plus 4 over x minus 2. Okay, um, I'll talk about the asymptotes in a little bit, you guys. Let's go ahead and start doing uh, increasing and decreasing, which is uh, uh, first uh, derivative, you guys. So relative extrema comes out of the first derivative where it increases or decreases, and the points of inflection also um, uh, is, an, is a second derivative uh, study analysis and we're looking for where it's concave up or concave down so where it's increasing or, or decreasing which is concave up concave down anyways so the intercepts you guys okay so there's no x-intercept because I can't make um, uh, y equal to zero so I can never make this numerator equal to zero because there's uh, this doesn't uh, this doesn't give me any real numbers right here so there's no x-intercept but the y-intercept uh, is when is when x equals zero. So when x equals zero, I plug in zero into all these, and I get y equals uh, negative two. So I do know it has a y-intercept at uh, negative two. So I'll, I'll save that. Okay. So for extremas, there's first derivative test. So I did um, I did f prime g minus f g prime. So this is f right here, and this is g all over g squared right there. And it gets to this right here, you guys. And I'm just saving some some time right here. Hopefully you can get to that stage right there. Okay, and then uh, all the criticals are when this equals zero, this equals zero, and this equals zero right here. Okay, so all the criticals are x equals zero, two, and four. Keep in mind at the beginning, x equals two is an asymptote because I can't make it equal to two. So x equals two is an asymptote right there. So just keep that in mind. All right, so I'm going to do a first derivative test. So I'm going to test uh, the criticals, 0, 2, and 4. And I plug these into the first derivative, you guys. So I plugged in like negative 1. I get a negative times a negative is a positive. This is always positive on the bottom because I'm squaring it. So this is positive right here. And I plugged in uh, x equals 1. I get negative asymptote right here. Don't forget, asymptote. I plugged in x equals 3. I got a negative. I plugged in x equals 5. I got a, a positive. So that just tells me that it's increasing and then it starts decreasing. So there's a relative max right here. Don't worry about that. That's an asymptote. And this one's decreasing. Then it goes to increasing. So this one's going to be a, a relative minimum. Okay. All right. So I know that now there's a relative max at x equals 0. And I get my y coordinate by plugging them into the, the original equation. And then uh, I get a relative min with, at uh, x equals 4, okay? So uh, max at uh, 0, negative 2, and a min at uh, 4, comma 6, okay? So the PIs come from your second derivative. So I take that first derivative, and I went ahead and distributed the x back through. So x times x is x squared. x times 4 is negative 4x, so that's where I get this. And then I did the derivative again. So here's f prime g uh, minus f g prime so there's the g prime all over g squared right there all right and then uh, clean it all up and then um, notice there's an x minus 2 here there's an x minus 2 here and there's some x minus 2's here this trick happens a lot you guys you're gonna factor out an x minus 2 out of all those and when you do that uh, they cancel out you guys and then so then you can go ahead and multiply them all together see they canceled out there's one left this whole one canceled out and there's uh, one of there's three of the four left here all right, and then clean it all up right here, and I get um, 8 over x minus 2 cubed. Okay, so there's no criticals on this, you guys, since x equals 2 is an asymptote. But I can tell if it's concave up or concave down. So plug in uh, x equals 1, and I get 1 minus 2 is a negative. 1 and negative 1 to the third is negative. So this is negative. This is going to be positive. So that tells me it's concave down. It's concave up. Okay, so it's cupping down, and it's cupping up on that guy. All right, so uh, now the asymptotes. Let's go ahead and get the asymptotes. Okay, the vertical asymptotes when the denominator equals zero. 
Okay, and then the horizontal asymptotes, uh, if there is any, is the reduced coefficient. Well, these, since this degree is 1 and this degree is 2, then it's a slant asymptote. So I'm going to go ahead and do long division to get the slant asymptote. Okay, so I get y equals x. Okay, don't, remember, don't worry about the remainder right here because we're talking about infinity and this remainder goes to 0 when we talk about infinity. So here's the slant, y equals x. Okay, so there's enough information right there. There's all my information I need to graph right there. I'm going to graph this slant. I'm going to graph this vertical, x equals 2. So the slant is going to go right up here, y equals x. And then the x equal 2 is going to go right down here. Okay, it's going to have a relative max at uh, 0, negative 2 right there. Okay, and, uh, and that's my, uh, my y-intercept anyways. It's going to have a relative min at 4, 6, so over 4, up 6. Okay, concave up, concave down, okay, over here. All right, so don't forget the asymptotes. And so get a graph that kind of looks like that, you guys. And then after you've done that, you've shown all that work because your AP readers are going to like to see that kind of work, you can go ahead and verify with your calculator right there, okay? All right, and if you're in my uh, calculus class, I would assign you guys that homework assignment right there. Good job, you guys.